Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at a couple of discharge curves for my lithium ion battery pack. Now this pack I put together a couple years ago and I've made a fair number of videos on it since, uh, so this will just be another one. Uh, I've already done the testing for this, so I'm just going to go ahead and go over the test setup and uh, I guess first I'm going to kind of explain what I was looking for when I was testing this. Uh, so first off, uh, a couple of people have commented before saying that uh, now normally when I talk about lithium batteries I say that the absolute minimum voltage is 3 volts, uh, 3 volts per cell that is, and a lot of people have corrected me in saying well technically the minimum voltage is 2.5 and, and I'm still, or, well what I wanted to test was how much capacity you actually lose from not using that extra half a volt. So. When I did these discharge tests, I took the batteries all the way down to 7.5 volts on the output instead of 9 volts. And I was also curious to see how much power I lose by using the power inverter that I usually do with this, which isn't on here right now. But that thing cuts out at 9.6 volts, which is kind of a weird voltage for a power inverter to cut out at. But I was curious as to how much power I was losing uh, for that as well as for cutting off that early. Uh, so I'll explain the test setup. Uh, I plugged this connector straight into the main port on this, which doesn't have any kind of protection on it whatsoever. No uh, under voltage, over voltage, fuses, none of that. So I went through that. The ground of that goes into the ground test lead here for this thing. And this is the Mushi meter, I think it is. Um, not a very widely used device, I don't think. Uh, at least the app for it's only been downloaded like 5,000 times or something like that. That doesn't seem like a very huge number for a multimeter, but uh, that's what this is essentially. It's a Bluetooth multimeter, which also has data logging capabilities. And kind of the interesting or the nice thing about it is that you can actually measure both voltage and current at the same time and just have that right to a micro SD card, as well as monitor it over Bluetooth. So. That's what I was using to uh, measure this stuff with, anyway. Uh, anyway, the amp jack goes back out <clears throat> through this one, I believe. Somewhere. Yeah, amp jack goes back into here, uh, which is the negative going back into the power supply, and then I'm measuring the positive voltage over here. So that's just measuring voltage and current. This power supply is what I was using to uh, put a load on the batteries. So we had a constant power output because I was just dumping the uh, power that was coming out of this straight into this big 10 ohm resistor. So I did 25 watts and I did 50 watts. And the reason why I did those two values is because 25 watts is a pretty common amount of power that I pull out of the inverter on this thing, either using it for like uh, a soldering iron, hot glue gun. I tend to use those sorts of devices off of this quite a bit. Uh, as well as just running my like Wi-Fi router and like a 10 watt ish CFL that uh, just for uh, during a power outage I would do that. And then I did 50 watts because that's around what a laptop would pull and that's another thing that I at least wanted to do with this device uh, was to be able to charge laptops with it which didn't really use it for that all that often but uh, uh, something that I have done with it before. So anyhow, that's the basic test setup. We'll go ahead and take a look at the data now. All right, so I've got a couple different spreadsheets here. We're going to take a look at the one for the 25 watt uh, curve first. So anyhow, I've got a couple of basic measures. I've got the average current and the average voltage. And of course, that's just taken by averaging out uh, this stuff. And then using the average current and the average voltage, I have figured out that we have roughly 120 watt hours that have been pulled out of the pack and about 11 amp hours. So this pack may not be uh, completely like optimal anymore because really 25 watts shouldn't be much at all for this size of a battery pack. I mean, <clears throat> it's two laptop batteries and it's an older laptop. So I'm sure that the entire laptop probably took 25 watts or more under a pretty good load. But anyway, um, that's our basic figures, and I also figured out what the uh, number of watts going into the input were uh, throughout the test. So uh, this is the wattage graph over time, uh, 
So not too bad. This big spike in the beginning here is because I didn't have a power supply set completely right. So I had like 30 watts for a couple of seconds and then it, uh, uh, I got it put back down to where I want it to be right around 25. So we were roughly 24 to 25 watts on the input throughout the entire time until we got to the very end where the efficiency of that uh, converter uh, started to drop and it started pulling more power. Um, that... And this is, well, the voltage versus current graph is exactly what you expect it to be. It's the voltage drops and the current goes up. That's exactly what it takes to get constant power, so nothing real special there. And for the voltage graph, I'm going to go ahead and get a bigger picture of this, and uh, we're going to draw it a little bit, so give me a second. All right, so this is the 25 watt constant power discharge curve, and it's a typical lithium discharge curve. It's a characteristic curve, and it's basically you start out fairly high, you turn the load on, it drops down, it basically settles into a voltage. It drops relatively slowly. I mean, we're looking at a span of like four hours here, so it's dropping pretty slowly. And then it hits a certain point, and it just kind of shoots straight down. Now the first thing I want to point out, I'm going to I'm going to draw a line down here that is where I stopped the test at, which was seven and a half volts. So I'm just going to leave that there. And the next thing is the way that this works is since we're pulling 25 watts of power constantly, roughly 25 watts. That's about what the average is. And we're comparing this to hours. The area underneath this curve is essentially the capacity. And we can just use uh, sort of visual representations of how much capacity you have at a certain voltage. So I'll kind of I'll show this a little bit more here in a second. But I'm going to go ahead and switch over to this uh, drawing tool. And the first thing I want to point out is because this has been argued before in my uh, like comment section on other videos explaining why I use a 3s pack instead of a 4s pack for my 12 volt system. Um, there really, there's no good way to get a 12 volt system, honestly, uh, out of lithium ion batteries. Lithium iron, or lithium iron, like iron metal phosphate batteries, or, or what are they? LIFE. Those batteries, you can actually get a 4S pack, and it's basically perfectly a 12 volt system. So, and yeah, lithium ion is kind of hard to do. But first thing I want to point out here, 9 volts is right here, which is 3 volts per cell. And it's been argued before by people that have left comments on my videos that, well, if you build a 4S pack, you can actually drain them down to 3.5 volts per cell, which is, what, uh, 10 volts for the entire pack, which would make sense for a 12-volt system. But I, I've been saying that 3 volts is really the minimum for a... Uh, a lithium cell, which would be 9 volts for a 3S pack, or it'd be all the way up at 12 volts for a 4S pack, which 12 volts as a minimum voltage for a 12 volt system is terrible. Definitely don't want that. Um, you want to go down to at least 10.5 volts. So, anyway, what I wanted to point out the amount of capacity that you get for a or for draining it below three volts per cell and going all the way down to that uh, two and a half mark, is this red sliver right here. That's how much capacity you gain on a, uh, or by, by draining it down that extra volt and a half. That's absolutely nothing. And the next thing I want to point out, <clears throat> and I've explained this before too, but I've managed to find a really weird inverter completely on accident that uh, shuts off at about 9.6 volts, which is roughly here on my graph. And I'll draw the line down like so. And we'll switch to this tool and we'll shade that in. So the yellow plus the red is the capacity that I lose from using my particular setup to run 25 watts. Now, mind you, a lot of times I'm using my setup to power a 25 watt soldering iron or a 10 watt hot glue gun or, you know, like a 12-watt CFL and a, uh, a Wi-Fi router that can't pull very much power um, as a, uh, or in a power outage. I've done that a couple times before, uh, you know, just to get a little bit of light. And, of course, you got to have Wi-Fi. That's like a life-saving thing there. <laughs> um, anyway, 
uh, this green part of the curve that I'm filling in right now is the part of the battery's capacity that I am using, which you can see is a huge majority of it. So So for one thing, I am most certainly using basically all of the capacity in my lithium cells when I do that, even though I'm cutting off at 9.6 volts. And another thing that I wanted to point out that's actually kind of a bad idea to be going all the way down to 2.5 volts uh, with lithium cells is the fact that they're not actually going to stay balanced, So, especially as the battery ages. And even when I did this test, when I went and plugged my battery back into the charger, the open circuit voltage had risen back up to about 9 volts. But one of the sets of cells was at like 3.5 volts, and then the other two were at 2 point something. Which means, during this discharge, uh, at least two of my sets of cells actually got uh, well below the 2.5 volt mark, uh, which you're not supposed to do. And I mean, the way that you're supposed to have that is, you know, you, you should have a something anyway that monitors these individual cell voltages and you can cut them out if you go below two and a half volts per cell or on a single cell. Um, because the voltage at the battery terminals may have been seven and a half, but the individual cell voltage might have been like 2.2 on a couple of them and, you know, three point something on the last one. Uh, which is not good for them. And that's definitely below the absolute minimum. So that's another reason not to take them down below 3 volts per cell. It's three, 3 volts per cell is really just a safety thing. Um, and of course, if you have a BMS, it's not going to let you take them down below three or uh, 2.5 volts per individual cell. And if they're out of balance, then you're probably still going to end up somewhere around 12 volts where it cuts off anyway. So... Uh, anyway, that's the that's the 25 watt discharge curve. We'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, 50 watt one. Also, as I mentioned, I'm saving the lifespan of my batteries by you know lifespan in years or in uh, charge discharge cycles by not draining them down all the way. So I don't really see a problem with doing this. All right, before we actually look at the curve for the 50 watt test, we're going to go ahead and look at the sort of statistics, I guess you could say. So first off, the average voltage was 10.37, which was, uh, you know, that's, that's actually a lot lower than the, what was it, like 11.1, .1, roughly, or 11.039. So the 10.37 is a lot lower in this case, and the average amperage is about 5, so we're somewhere around double the amperage. Uh, amount of watt hours we pulled out was 95, which is a decent bit lower than the 120 we had, so that's to be expected. A higher load, you end up pulling less power out of the pack, and then amp hours is only 9.25 instead of roughly 11. Uh, also, another kind of weird thing here is these graphs load in. Uh, this wattage graph is a little bit nuts. Uh, as you can see here, we're bouncing between 50 and 52 watts for most of the duration, and it starts to, it comes up quite a bit uh, toward the end, and it really shoots up at the very end, of course. Now, why is it doing this, you may ask? Well, that power supply has a temperature-controlled fan on it, and it would detect that the MOSFETs, and probably a MOSFET and a diode, or whatever's on that heat sink, uh, when it uh, gets too warm, it would turn the fan on, and then after a while, it would detect that they were okay, and it'd turn the fan back off, and then it'd just keep doing that. Uh, so you've got this kind of wavy wattage line. You see it's not really bouncing up and down by that much, and it's averaging probably about 51 watts throughout the entire uh, discharge. Now, I don't really see this as a problem. I see this more as a realistic uh, measure, honestly. Same thing with the other one. Uh, just with the fact that it wasn't completely perfect, because uh, if you ask me, you know, constant power discharge on the battery itself is probably good if you want to measure the capacity, but for getting a discharge curve like this, this is probably more of a real-world test, uh, just because this is what a real power supply is going to do if you're powering something useful. So, let me go ahead and switch back to this one, but, and then this is the same thing, that's, you know, that's what a real power supply is going to do. 
<laughs> well, that is a real power supply. Except for we weren't powering a, a real load in quote marks. Uh, you know, I was just dumping the power into a resistor. But uh, anyhow, current graph does the exact same thing with the sort of bouncing up and down. And you can actually see it a little bit on the voltage graph. And of course, the voltage versus current on this is basically the exact same graph. It's just, you know, less voltage, more current. That's how power works. And then the big one, which we're going to go over here for. All right, so this graph, I'll do the same thing I did before. It'll take the 7.5 volt line and kind of draw it in here. I'm not going to draw it in very straight, but we're going to draw it in there. Now, this one's a little bit more interesting because if we take the 9 volt mark, we are right here. And then that's like so. Now we actually are losing a little bit of, uh, you know, measurable capacity. Before with the uh, 25 watt discharge, the amount of capacity that you're losing by not using that extra volt and a half per cell. Uh, not volt and a half per cell. Half a volt per cell. Volt and a half for the entire pack. Uh, but anyway, that was a pretty negligible amount of power. Now you can actually see the amount of power at least. That might be 7%, 7-8%. It's definitely not a whole lot, but it is some power. And if we do the same thing I did before, and we pretend that we are my inverter, and we shut it off at about 9.6 volts, that's about here. All right, so now you can see we've got a decent bit of capacity loss by having my inverter shut off at roughly 9.6 volts there. So, not exactly a perfectly ideal situation, but let me go ahead and color in the green part as well. All right, that's good enough. So... Still, I'm using a fair chunk of the amount of capacity that's in those batteries. Not as much as before with 25 watt load, but still most certainly a sizable amount of the capacity in the batteries is being used. Uh, even with my inverter that cuts out at a reasonably high voltage anyway, fairly high voltage for a 3S pack. Or for, yeah, for a 3S lithium pack. So anyway, Setup isn't perfect, but it avoids the pitfalls of having like a way too high voltage as well. So anyway, that's just a look at the uh, lithium discharge curves and how it applies to my setup, which is uh, why I kind of found this useful. Also, you might also note here, if we were at 10 and a half volts, we'd be at the line right here. And if your inverter was cutting out at 10 and a half volts, you'd be losing that much capacity which would actually be you know that's like half of it not quite half of it but pretty close so my 9.6 volts is pretty reasonable um might be using 75 percent of the capacity of the batteries or so maybe uh, 70 something like that and as i said i'm not really bothered by not using all the capacity just because it's uh, you know it, the service life of the batteries is going to be better you know, just it's not as hard on them draining them all the way down and all the way and charging them all the way back up again. So, to me, this isn't a problem. It's just, just how it is. I don't really mind. I don't usually push too much of a load through this uh, setup anyway. Uh, but yeah, that's just just what it looks like. So, what have we actually learned from all of this stuff? Well, first off. The amount of power that you lose by only going down to 3 volts per cell varies greatly. Uh, it's going to vary based on load, it's going to vary based on how big your battery pack is, it's probably going to vary based on temperature and maybe even a couple other factors too, but uh, I found this stuff quite interesting just because of how much it actually did vary and just what these discharge curves look like. I've always kind of wondered what they look like on my particular battery pack and really, you know, it doesn't look any different from uh, just a one that you could rip off of Google. It's basically the exact same thing, but now I have the real ones from my particular setup, so I think that's pretty cool. But uh, anyhow, hope you guys enjoyed that, and that's it until next time. I'll see you then. Bye.